welcome everyone on play chess and on YouTube I'll be streaming to YouTube as well so let's take the audio out there the uh, echo I thought this week we could carry on looking at the US chess championship um, so the US chess championship has got three leaders at the time of speaking at the moment uh, which we're going to look at two games of each of the three leaders uh, so the first game to have a look at I'd like to have a look at is um, Alexander Onischuk uh, playing white against Lenderman so d4 from uh, Onischuk um, I hope by, by the way the YouTube stream is okay I um, hope everyone's okay there we'll carry on um, right so Knight f6 and uh, we see Lendman playing actually after e6 Knight f3 he plays d5 and here Knight c3 is played and we see the Rigozin system, Bishop B4, so pinning that knight. Uh, C takes D5, is played E takes, and now Bishop G5. Whoops, Bishop G5. <clears throat> I think this is a fairly common move here. Uh, so H6 kicking that bishop. And uh, bishop h4, c5, putting pressure on white's center. And white supports the d4 pawn with e3 now. Black now releases the tension immediately. I think maybe he's risking a nice that queen's pawn if he doesn't do this. Black immediately played c4 now. Okay, he's blunting the bishop. I think it's really designed against the problems of the isolated Queen's pawn the potential problems there so um, now we see Queen c2 and black castles and here Knight d2 is played which basically unpins that Knight and there might be an issue with d5 now so Bishop e6 protects d5 Uh, bishop e2 knight uh, c6 white castles bishop e7 unpinning the knight b3 okay so here it looks as though white's okay undermining that pawn chain but uh, with the queen on c2, is this viable? Rook c8 looks at that queen. So is it quite dangerous for white to take on c4 here now? Uh, so we see b takes c4. d takes c4. And uh, now rook fd1. It looks as though in the center white could be potentially playing now d5 so slightly dangerous uh, looking at the moment knight d5 hitting the bishop bishop takes queen takes um, now white dares to take that pawn on c4 with bishop uh, takes c4 So is it dangerous uh, this lining up against the Queen is it actually quite dangerous um, by the way is there anyone actually on YouTube stream there have I messed this up technically I'm just wondering if anyone's actually <laughs> watching on YouTube at the moment uh, um, is it let me just go back for a moment, uh, 
uh, to just check something. And um, put on the watch page again. Um, okay. Um, and is the audio okay on Play Chess? I'm just wondering if I've really messed this up so far. Uh, so here, Black played Knight CB4. And white, oh good. <laughs> the Hawkworth, hi there. Audio's here. Yes, great. That's great. So at least on on play chess, uh, someone's hearing this. So knight takes d5. So it looks dangerous for this pin, but um, white has got an extra pawn at the moment. So is black in trouble, or was all this calculated? At the moment, there's also b5 is immediately on the cards using that pin. Oh, YouTube is here as well. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I thought that <laughs> I've managed to mess it up technically this week. That no one was hearing me on play chess, and no one was able to see it on YouTube or hear me. So it's good to to know that there's someone watching this now, because <laughs> these games are sometimes not the most exciting that I've ever seen in my life. I just thought objectively take the free leaders, look at. Uh, two of their recent wins in the tournament just just let everyone know what's going on in the US Championship but then they might not be the most exciting games ever I mean I don't claim that but here th this is actually a moment of excitement in this game with this pin on the Queen so has black got enough for the pawn can't white sidestep the pin uh, okay let's I'll, I'm gonna add um, the kibitzer here as well <laughs> um, if I can uh, Okay, we're going to add a kibitzer to this position, Houdini. Uh, just to know technically what's going on, it's as though white should be almost okay with queen a4, almost a slight advantage, but queen b3 was played, uh, which might be less accurate. Um, it allows black equality. Queen a4 apparently is the critical, critical, more critical move. So bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes. There's actually a pin here, a3. And and white should be okay here. This this position apparently is is okay for white. Uh, but what was played in the game was actually queen b3. This might be the first slight in slight inaccuracy, because black now plays rook uh, takes c4. Okay, so a temporary exchange sacrifice uh, to build up pressure now against the pinned knight. Remember, there's now b5 still on the cards. So rook a c1 b5. And things get a bit crazy here now. Um, actually, I'm not even sure Rook AC1 was was the best here. Maybe it was best to play A3. Apparently, A3 is actually a good move in this position. Actually, um, Black might have actually considered immediately exploiting the pin because this position with A3 uh, looks looks actually quite quite good. Um, for being the exchange up there and if the knight actually moved uh, then uh, rook here and yeah it's it's not so clear um, black's compensation actually it's, it seems it seems uh, white's doing nicely there but in the game uh, so this rook ac1 allowed b5 here and I think black's now in the driving seat actually technically so tiny little inaccuracies, but black might actually be in the driving seat now. Um, because of the difference after a3 now, black responds with a5. Uh, and this this is actually uh, very, very interesting. So if, if white just simply, um, if, if white takes on b4, then b takes c4, and this, this is good. Uh, for black because uh, look at these two connected past pawns uh, that's very good compensation for the exchange actually uh, very good indeed in fact g2 has been looked at here for queen g5 so this this is to be avoided um, but um, so white actually tries to create complexity here 
uh, he he does e4 very tactical move e4 in the circumstance uh, these pieces are slightly loose particularly the rook's not protected by anything and e4 was designed to do something with that rook now after b takes to hit that rook with queen h3 so it's slightly loose rook so what's going on here well black um, it seems is uh, material up at the moment uh, so rook versus a bishop and knight but um, this this problem here, he attacks the queen, uh, so gaining an important tempo. Queen e3, so knight d3. So he's definitely rook and knight versus, uh, sorry, rook versus knight and bishop now. Okay, so white now plays rook c3, and we see now uh, queen a7. And yeah, black is just material up right now uh, there's no major tactic or anything and um, we, with some issues on the center white actually goes for an exchange sack to just be a whole bishop down um, maybe you know if d5 instead maybe black just takes that here and this this is this is okay for black this is nice for black uh, but so this is quite a radical decision to sacrifice the exchange uh, to be a whole bishop down now after rook takes queen takes so can black consolidate this uh, being a whole bishop up so this is just at move 29 uh, Alexander Onischuk on the UCF United States Chess Federation rating is apparently 2751 I think his FIDE rating is about 100 points lower actually but a very formidable opponent with white is now a bishop down against Lenderman uh, we see bishop a6 and now queen b6 so the queen is heading for that back row f3 check and it's going to cause chaos in conjunction with the bishop now check uh, now a4 which introduces also queen b3 an important idea that this pawn is also very dangerous d5 queen b3 so black is combining pressure on the queen side pawn with potential king safety as well evicting the queen importantly so queen c5 and now we get this check check and it's very very dangerous here for white well bishop down it's pretty it looks actually pretty lost black now played g5 uh, possibly white could hold out a bit longer than what he played with h3 but uh, it's looking bad um, we see now uh, queen b6 this might not have been the best because this is actually now forced mate for black black has apparently a, a absolute forced mate check that is the best move and queen h4 check now is a forced mate in nine believe it or not white actually resigned here so let's see this forced mate in nine well if king e3 then queen e1 check and then we can actually pick up the queen uh, so that's 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 not very good and I'll be mating shortly after that um, or in this position there's the nasty Queen e1 that's embarrassing uh, so it's pretty bad this position or g3 we just lose h2 and then again this this is not the greatest place for the Queen on on b6 so a bit of a strange game there um, if we look at the opening phase black seem to have broken a positional rule in a way with this Rogozin system well in general not the Rogozin system in this particular position this is a very interesting idea to play c4 because whites expend a lot of effort to put potential pressure on d5 and potentially I say the Queen so c4 seems quite justified here and what we saw you know white undermining that pawn chain at the base seems to be you know a logical completely logical idea but I think it was around here that there's a particular inaccuracy which could have told a different story I think for this game well the engines suggest here anyway that in this particular position Queen a4 and white could have been okay so very complicated uh, idea well especially to, to, to go into this my more dynamic trying to find this more dynamic composition uh, continuation is going to be difficult at the board but this is slightly better rook and pawn ending maybe but even in in the game continuation uh, after this 
um, this might have been an inaccuracy actually believe it or not because it's it's given here that um, a3 again in this position on white could have actually had a different story here potentially you see that b5 is, is not as effective here because the Queen's controlling b5 so it makes a lot of difference little subtleties in the position but in the game as the game went it seems black got into the driving seat somehow this this went tactically crazy now this position after e4 so tactically going crazy with um, white going a bishop down now it's yeah it seems a little bit unsound um, but uh, it from little subtleties going wrong a bit earlier this resulted so an interesting game there for Lenderman to to win with the black pieces in round eight and in round nine Lenderman was white against Daniel Naritsky uh, let's have a look at that now that was a King's engine defense let's flip the board so it started off as the English opening okay so knight f6 from Daniel Naritsky and we get a King's engine defense classical bishop e2 and now black instead of playing knight c6 I believe this is still the most common move knight c6 although my live books not activated at the moment can't really check anything it seems great um, so anyway I'm pretty sure knight c6 is the most common but e takes is quite active as well interesting releasing the central tension but black's trying for peace play here so rookie eight white defends that e4 pawn knight c6 bishop e3 uh, knight h5 so black has got these dark squares to play on as well it potentially is quite dangerous white takes on c6 now and plays queen d2 now black lashes out with f5 so very energetic play from black uh, white simply now builds up in the center with rook ad1 and it looks as though c5 is going to be useful uh, with pressure down that d file c5 could be a very useful break in this position uh, queen e7 okay rook f e1 and again c5 is on the cards here it would help liberate white's position uh, knight f6 is played c5 while well possible is is, is is interesting white actually def cautiously defended e4 a bit more and now black took knight takes e4 so an interesting position i think white's slightly better here at the moment bishop f5 knight f2 and we have a bishop exchange uh, queen f7 and looking at c4 that's just protected so white's got the better structure at the moment a5 queen c2 but it's it's roughly equal i mean black has dynamic compensation knight d7 bishop f2 um, and actually it, it is a bit of a long positional struggle now that ensues from here queen f5 rook e2 an exchange of rooks knight e5 an exchange of knights queen c2 so okay can white make use of his better structure a4 at least trying to get rid of an isolated pawn white actually takes like that queen b2 queen e4 queen takes a2 queen takes c6 so a lot of pawns are getting dissolved here uh, equal on pawns and now rook f1 why did the king go to f8 you might ask uh, i think it didn't matter actually particularly if i mean it could go to h8 as well uh, but it went to f8 uh, rook f1 rook e8 uh, still a small advantage for white right now now this c5 finally trying to damage black structure in the center queen a8 that's rejected queen c6 rook d1 bishop f6 so a bit of a grind but after bishop f6 now things get a little bit dangerous for black's king after queen f4 uh, there are some weaknesses here evident king g7 uh, c takes d6 and black is relying on this bishop e5 to regain this pawn safely queen d2 queen takes d6 and again it looks around about equal so maybe you know under different circumstances other players would have just agreed uh 
a draw here uh, it looks very uh, equal Queen c2 black hasn't got time here to take on a h2 uh, I believe because just King h1 would be big trouble for black with the Queen attacks say Queen e5 there's Bishop d4 uh, say Queen f4 uh, rook d7 is big trouble for black so this this is to be uh, avoided this kind of thing this this looks dangerous also for black's king let alone the bishop so so that was wisely avoided taking on h2 as it looks to be a definitely a poison pawn at least from an engine perspective it's a poison pawn that one so it was avoided so black here seemed to be playing quite solidly for the moment and um has white got anything well there's a check here and now things started to get difficult for black suddenly in this position with bishop c5 this forcing move uh, seems a little bit difficult to meet now because after bishop if bishop d6 which wasn't played actually rook e8 was played but if bishop d6 then white is having a winning position instantly with bishop d4 check uh, forcing the king to h6 and then rook h4 this would be instantly uh, winning uh, for white for example like this uh, so that would draw the king out uh, so black has to be extremely careful after this bishop c5 he plays rook e8 queen a f um, queen c6 rook e6 for the moment again uh, with precision this looks to be it's not too bad for black at the moment uh, now this next move is designed I think against white playing f4 because we've got this pin on e6 so if white plays f4 that's really bad news so g5 uh, trying to dissuade f4 now g3 again um, it looks as though f4 might be on cards at some point uh, and here we see the move king f6 it looks a bit strange it's a radical way of defending e6 for sure uh, if white did continue with f4 then this should be okay for black this this continuation is actually winning a rook for example um, so that would for something else so that that's not possible but white plays queen d3 here and look at that diagonal being slightly weakened uh, with that g5 uh, so this does diagonal is, is being pounced on immediately and white is now threatening well has has some threats to parry black I think panics a little bit here uh, but it's starting to get a bit tricky maybe black should play h6 or or rookie eight these these might help safeguard the position but Bishop a1 as played looks to be Believe it or not, a decisive mistake. We've taken the evaluation here with this single move, Bishop a1, from apparently just small advantage for white, about half a pawn, to enormous plus six now. Um, this next move is a crusher. It's a bone crushing move uh, in this position. It's actually a double attack move. And I wonder if you can spot it. So this is at move 48. What does white play here? it really it really gets a massive advantage can you spot it if I give you 20 seconds starting from now so white play Anyone got any ideas? Any ideas? Do you want to throw a move out on, on YouTube or anyone? Hopefully, you've caught up with the position by now. So, White's playing this position. yeah it looks as though 
actually it's not just about a double attack it's about other things as well in the position um, I'm going to show you now I'm hoping you'll get this uh, so white in this position played rook a4 so simultaneously um, looking at the bishop but also rook a7 is introduced um, and this this diagonal is sensitive as well the king king looks sensitive um, and there's some problems here with h7 as well because if the rook comes along that seventh rank with e7 covered by the bishop this is a disaster for losing h7 so black uh, played uh, well he has to do something about the bishop though there's not too many things to do if he plays a check I think this is even worse King f2 say like this uh, white can actually just just do something like this and um, it, these these pieces are where where is this rook going Queen d2 where is it going it's it's in big trouble uh, we can play this and probably pick up the rook now shortly Queen f5 no this is this is just big trouble uh, yeah you, you see that this is crushing you can't, you can't have a loose rook like this so there's it looks as a rookie one as that example shows is not particularly hot uh, so black play rook sorry Bishop e5 allowing this rook a7 so h7 is in trouble now uh, the Queen moves and white now just takes with the Queen Queen takes h7 and blacks King safety is also perilous after just taking that pawn all sorts of threats against the King King after Bishop b2 Queen g7 and black resigns here now that looks, that looks let's examine why exactly because after King f5 don't think the idea is to take the bishop this might backfire I think taking the bishop no apparently that's okay <laughs> yeah. check King f2 there's no problem that's okay just taking the bishop even stronger is to play g4 check and rook f7 uh, this would force losing the Queen okay but uh, yeah so it seems just a little slip up with this Bishop a1 uh, it's, it's unfortunate it's unfortunate in a way uh, so if black had just played something like rook e8 um, this this looks more more solid or even h6 I'm not sure h6 should should lose necessarily although actually this is troublesome with rook a4 even in this position this is still a, a very strong idea actually uh, here uh, maybe just going for the c c6 pawn is, is a strong idea um, I don't know about this, the second rank could have been um, defended so yeah it's a slight inaccuracy just crept in it seems losing that pawn uh, devastating consequences uh, losing this pawn of course it's around the king uh, that's not good so okay um, so that was Lenderman so he's in the lead at the moment with two other people one of them is Vruzen Akobian so let's have a look at another Akobian game we saw one last week so Akobian against Ehrenberg um, so in round eight uh, d4 and we see the Queen's game accepted being played by Sergei Ehrenberg uh, so what does Akobian do well he plays modestly with e6 he recollects that pawn he doesn't mind black playing b5 he drops the bishop to d3 a4 he's trying to get into these light squares weaken these light squares Queen e2 and also a6 is under some scrutiny here c5 now Knight b3 uh, so potentially DC is annoying black reinforces c5 and DC is played anyway so we've got a symmetrical pawn structure in principle it looks as though this shouldn't be such a big advantage for white out of the opening um, knight takes bishop takes and now Rosen plays e4 h6 a5 fixing down the a6 pawn after castles we see e5 and now white reinforces the e5 pawn 
Um, bishop e4 challenging that bishop, actually trying to undermine a little bit the a6 pawn. Some pressure on a6 here. Black actually keeps that rook and uses the other now with rook fb8. Rook fc1, bishop a7. Now white takes on b7. Takes. Now clearly we can't take this pawn because the bishop takes f2 check. That would be a major disaster. Uh, but the thing is about this that a6 in principle is weak so rook c6 hits it again and black now plays knight c5 and we see queen c4 uh, rook d8 is played uh, which might be a slight inaccuracy there might be better moves available here like challenging this rook rook c7 i think that keeps the quality but this move rook d8 I think this might be the first slight inaccuracy after bishop e3 white um, has got some uncomfortable pressure now in this position against particularly a6 uh, so black played knight d3 now and this doesn't help the situation at all uh, what should black actually play in this position it start it did start already to be uncomfortable here after bishop e3 uh, black again perhaps should just play rook c7 but with knight d3 uh, white now takes that bishop on a7 and protects his pawn which basically renews in a way the threat on a6 without losing a pawn and now uh, we see rook d5 okay so what is going on here after rook d5 uh, well if let's have a look if rook takes a6 then this might be okay for black after queen c5. Um, this disposition is troublesome uh, for white. Um, so, Rusin, he, he keeps control here of c5 for the moment. He plays h3 calmly. And he's letting black take this um, pawn. Uh, but I'm not sure black should really be doing this here. Uh, possibly better is queen b7 protecting a6 and we're going to see a the a6 pawn without the a6 pawn this this is potential runner and we see black taking on e5 now swapping um this pawn for that pawn but this is a potential runner and knight takes e5 rook takes rook takes a6 so potentially dangerous past a pawn and uh black now takes on a6 queen takes uh queen c7 now queen b6 so the pawn is is ready to roll really queen c3 hitting the rook uh, but a very clever little maneuver now because black does seem to have some dangerous counterplay building up Rusen plays check and can you guess well in this position actually it's, it's not a major like magical move just the queen drops back to d1 not only protecting b3 but a1 so the pawn is elegantly you know supported simply by the rook now on a1 uh, and black does seem to be um, need, needs to go on the back foot trying to do something immediately about this a pawn for example rook d5 um, check uh, and now this this gets dangerous but potentially it seems um, this, this this is bad news but uh, maybe it's just about tenable uh, possibly this this is just about tenable but it starts to get dangerous very have to go into black's uh, intended tactic or cheapo you might call it uh, intended tactic was it restored um I stop the Now this, pardon me, I've, I seem to have lost connection there. Um, so white play in this position. Uh, I'm hoping you will catch up to it pretty shortly, getting to the position. Uh, so white play had a really crushing move here. Uh, can you spot it? I think I might have to show you because uh, we've lost that connection. White just plays 
a7 here um, he doesn't mind uh, even rook takes f2 the black actually resigned if rook takes f2 then queening actually protects g2 queen f2 doesn't really do anything just king here and uh, that's queening okay so that was one of the games of Rosen Kobian uh, let's have a look at another uh, so Ray Robson against Rosen Kobian uh, Rosen playing black so d4 d5 we see c4 e6 a solid defense and now g3 from Ray Robson so Catalan territory check Bishop e7 both sides castle c6 pretty the Queen drops back to h5 actually hitting the Bishop so he's taken a pawn in broad daylight here we get away with it rook takes rook takes Bishop g2 Knight g4 looking at h2 so this swaps off the, the couple of Knights Bishop e3 still a pawn up uh, for black uh, Bishop g5 trying to rob white of the bishop pair. Okay, so um, h3. Queen goes to h5. Still looking at d1 from there. Bishop d4. Rook d8. g4. Queen actually goes to the curious location of h4 here. Um, avoiding uh, queen if queen g6 might run into bishop e4 i think that's the point um maybe wanted to avoid that still might be okay for for black um but uh yeah the queen went to h4 after bishop e5 rook takes queen takes bishop goes to e7 um i'm wondering by the way, has, has everyone managed to reconnect on on YouTube? Uh, just check what's going on here. My hmm. Uh, interesting. <laughs> okay, I yes, I'm hoping uh, people are back there. Sorry about this. So I'm having some technical issues with my connection tonight. Um, so anyway, we have this position with um, Bishop e7, Queen e2. Uh, Bishop goes to c5. So Rosen, I think he's in the driving seat now. Pawn up. Can he convert this? Bishop b8, a5, Queen f3. Queen drops back to d8. So that's pretty useful and nifty. Uh, Bishop f4. Knight g6, bishop drops back. Queen d2 looking at f2. So it looks as though black is really getting into the driving seat here in this uh, position. Uh, but can he convert it? So the advantage is like plus one from an engine point of view, just plus one here. a4, uh, bishop d6. So trying to get rid of white's bishop pair. White obliges there. And it, look, f4 is remarkably weak now after that exchange. Queen c3, knight f4. This knight is actually quite gorgeous in my view. And the pawns are away from the colour of the bishop here. So this looks as though there should be nice queen and knight coordination coming up. In fact, if it's queen d1, immediately threatening knight e2. Queen c8 check. Queen c4. g5, reinforcing the knight. Check. Uh, now king f8 and b4 was played b4 slightly loosening but black is threatening what is black actually threatening well it seems as though white's almost getting in some sort of zigzag here it seems pretty dangerous here the queen is tied down quite a lot uh to things so b4 uh and now black takes that a pawn so he's got this past a pawn and we know he's good with his a pawns from the previous game uh, so is this going to be enough uh, he's now two pawns up actually so b5 knight d5 queen e5 
queen f4 so taking away some checks like this but there's a check here taking so he's only seven uh, knight e2 threatens mate though that's another interesting thing queen a1 a4 so actually tying down the queen like this h4 that's just taken what, what a, a very hard opening this is to face uh, black played very natural looking moves actually uh, to get a nagging little well to get an advantage uh, great winning a pawn over here uh, this this looks um, a little bit perspective pawn sack in red a pawn are just so so strong here in this position okay so that's that's that story of of that game um i don't know in light of the connection problems should we try and look at a couple more um or, or should we reserve it for next week it's been about i think 40 minutes in total um um i'm not really sure I'll just I'll just quickly ask I don't know how stable this connection is now um, okay yeah I'm sorry about this week's technical issues uh, perhaps we should continue uh, next time so next Tuesday at around the same time around eight o'clock uh, okay um, yeah <laughs> okay uh, see, see you next week. I, have to, I think I have, should really cut it short this week. Um, okay, thanks very much and have a good week.